In this podcast, we chat about Boris' defeat to Blackburn Rovers, boring news with Lee Catwell becoming Boris' under-18 league coach. We look ahead to Coventry City and we answer your podcast questions. This is the Borough Breakdown podcast and this is our Borough Master Chatter in a pod. One support, Curtis Fleming is there on the edge of the air. Fleming for That's Craig it. Hignett, hit it Higgy, Higgy hits the track! Abanelli coming alive again. Janino wants the ball played to him. Abanelli spots out. Emerson! Hello and welcome to the Board Breakdown podcast with Johnny, Dana and Tom. We are the Board Podcast that gives you all of your Board Match Day chatter in a podcast and this week Boris suffered the first defeat in since November in a 1-0 defeat against Blackburn Rovers courtesy of a goal from Sam Gallagher put Borough currently seventh in the championship table with 42 points two points behind Huddersfield with a game in hand guys it was a long eventful night and that's just I'm talking about us getting to Weewood Park um <laughs> how are you feeling in three words Dana do you want to go first yeah, I'm gonna throw a bit of a meme into the uh, into the ring here. I'm gonna put my uh, Jeremy Clarkson hat on and say, "Oh no!" Anyway, because <laughs> Borough's unbeaten run is over. Of course, first defeat in two months. Last one was obviously, like you said, in November, 23rd of November against Preston. Um, but I have no qualms with it, to be honest. I have no major gripe. Um, they have the best home record in the championship. To to Blackburn, they've only lost twice at Ewood Park, so I think sometimes you just have to hold your hands up and say, "Fair play." Um, the more that I watch the game, or sorry, when I watch the game back, I, I started to give them a little bit more credit than than what I did at full time. And um, yeah, I think the the only disappointment was the way that we the way that we lost it. The goal that we conceded came through a mistake, um, but all in all, it's not the end of the world. So you're describing your, your feelings in a meme, uh, and Tom, how how are you feeling in three words? Well, how I'm feeling, three words is so very tired just from <laughs> <laughs> that night at Awood and and getting back, driving driving through that fog and and stuff. It was it pretty much summed up the entire game, didn't it? Yeah. Like the journey there, the journey back, and then that bad bit of luck causing their goal. Um, it w- probably wouldn't feel as tired, feel a bit more buoyed if uh, if if we'd have actually got a draw, or a, a win from that. But yeah, it yeah. just. Seemed like everything that could go wrong last night did go wrong, and it obviously carried over the the team as well. Yeah, so it, well, hey, well, I drove anyway, so I don't know why you're tired. Uh, you, you could have, uh, you could have, you could have slept in the car. The pair of years. Um but yeah, I think my three words. I think defeat was coming. It's probably the, the three words I want to go got to go for. I think the last couple of results we've got away with things, and I thought Blackburn did a job on us yesterday and we'll come on to that now um but Dana how would you assess Borough's performance last night because you were saying they're giving Blackburn a little bit more credit than the, 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 they deserve but how would you assess it it was a very off-colour performance from Borough and I think in the first 10 seconds we lost the 50-50 and misplaced a pass and that was before mm. the the little ticker the time ticker on Sky Sports had spawned so that just shows how how early in the game it was. And I think that really set the tone for the, the theme of the game because we never really stopped doing that. We constantly lost the the, the jewels. If I look on Y Scout at the jewels win success rate, uh, Blackburn won 49% of their jewels, Borough 44. And in the first half, Blackburn won 51% and Borough won 43. In the second half, 48% versus 44%. So it just it shows how maybe off off colour we were and I don't think it was a case of Borough just being a few yards off it they were about 10 yards off it to be honest we were quite slow and sluggish and um yeah it was it was a very uncharacteristic performance from what we've been accustomed to uh under Chris Wilder why do you think that was then well I think Blackburn got their their tactic spot on they really restricted us I think they pushed their midfield and their wing backs up quite high and, and what that really made uh, is Borough uncomfortable when they were building the ball out from the back. John Buckley was pivotal to this. He was a centrepiece to this. He was always either with uh, Johnny Housen or blocking the pass to him from defenders. So what you saw with Borough is we were passing it along the uh, the three centre-halves and the wing-backs, but Housen wasn't really there to receive the ball because 
John Buckley was cutting off the the pass to him. So I think Blackburn did a very good job on us. They pressed when they needed to, but I mean, Tony Mowbray set them up as a counter-attacking team. They're not a team that's going to dominate possession. They were fine with allowing Boyle the ball, but when they needed to press, they did. And I think they were more aggressive than us. They would, they definitely had more intensity, more intent. Um, their mentality was better. And I think what summed it up in the first half for Boyle in particular was that Spira and Connolly had the, the least amount of touches for Boyle in the game with 15 and 14 respectively. So it was just a really poor performance from Boyle. But having said that, I think we do need to give Rovers some credit. Tom, how, what would you add to that? How would you assess things on on your perspective? Yeah, it, it. I think it just comes down to something Dana mentioned there, which was mentality. Uh, looking at the two teams going into it, Blackburn looked like a team who just lost a hole last week and were eager to set things right. And I think Wilder sums it up best after the game where he, he said, we looked like we went into it thinking it was just going to be an easy game. Because one team was was flying into a, to all all the the tackles and winning them, uh, and pressing with intent, and and the other one just wasn't doing anything with the ball and not playing as we be, become accustomed to to us playing. Um, that said, I mean it's probably our worst performance under under Wilder. I think the first, we all said at the um, at half time it's probably the most Neil Warnock half of football that we've seen in a long time. Because yes. uh, we just seem to resort to, to opening the channels at times. Um, but yeah, I, I think, like you said earlier, Johnny, it has been coming and hopefully it can be a bit of a wake-up call as well. The the results since Forest, I mean, Blackpool was obviously could have went either way. I thought both teams played well that game. Uh, and, and then you look at, at the games in Mansfield against Redden. We didn't particularly play well, but we got the, the result in both of them. Uh, I think performances just have been dropping off just a little bit. Um, so maybe that, that Los Rovers will uh, get us uh, a bit more kind of perspective on, on where we are, uh, kind of head, uh, set heads right again, and, and hopefully we, we bounce back and show some uh, resilience against Coventry on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. And just to add to both of your points there, I think about Blackburn as well, I think the main difference is I appreciate mentality is one of them and, and what you were saying there, Dana, really, I, I agree with as well. But I think they did the basics very, very well. I think the deep block and then us having most of the ball played into their hands, really, like you were saying there, Dana, about Blackburn being a counter-attacking team. They were, since Borough was so slow and the tempo was off, they were able to get in the shape, they were able to get in that low block, set up the traps that they needed to set up and make things difficult for Borough. And I think that's why we were passing the ball across the back line so much in that first half because every time we were looking to maybe use our outlet and Jones, that little trap would just come in and then you'd be like, those would be forced to come back again, force it long. And when you have the strikers like Sparrow and, and Connolly up front, who are quite small in, in stature, it's going to be a, a difficult afternoon, a difficult evening for them, really. And, and for me, but when we did get it to feet, Spurra and Connolly were on top of each other. There was no outlet. The, the one touch off was always off and it wasn't coming across very well. And I think we just played it in the hands. And I think, to be honest, I thought Blackburn thoroughly deserved the victory, really. After I, when we were walking up the ground, I thought Blackburn aren't flash. They haven't. They haven't blew me away, but it was a prof professional performance and I think it was enough to probably to win the game in the end. But is it the end of the world? Absolutely not. I think it's one defeat in, in, in 10, you know, seventh in the championship. You know, we're, we're still scoring goals, we're creating chances and we look good at times in that first 15 minutes, second half, I thought we were excellent as well. But, you know, we'll come on to that uh, in, in a second. Um, but Tom... Although it was a, a slow first half in particular, um, there was one big moment in the half, and that was Eden's challenge on Jones in the box. Should it have been a penalty? Well, I mean, on first glance, I mean, I say first glance, we were pretty much as far away from it as we possibly could <laughs> be from behind the goal. Like, I, I was obviously shouting for a penalty, as I think most people were. Uh, having watched the replay back, I, I think it's definitely a penalty. Um, I'm I'm not sure how the referee or linesman haven't given it. Mm. Dana, you you had a little smug, a bit of smug on your face. You think it was? I can't say I can't say I agree. I think 
obviously it's it's one of those where it's in the category of you giving the decision uh, giving the referee a decision to make i mean eden comes over uh, cu- cuts across uh, jones but jones does have a habit of maybe going down a little bit too easily and um i th- no not for me i don't think that was see i thought it was tom so it's 2-1 to us um and <laughs> uh, I, I think i think he's Given the referee decision to make there, I think I think it was. I think he, he's clipped them at just the, just at the wrong time. But you know, it wasn't given. We went in at half time. It was nil nil. And I think if we were one nil up, I think we would have been very lucky to be one nil up. But it could have completely changed the game. And um, but in that second half, Tom, I just alluded to a couple of minutes ago. But Borough looked really really good in that first fifteen minutes. The tempo was a bit better. It was a bit more crisp. We were creating more chances, getting in behind. What was the difference there? I think that's something we we have been finding under Wilder, and it's it's such a a refreshing change from earlier this season because we spoke about it all too often under Warnock, the slow starts, start at the start of the first half, or like just coming out in the, the second half and not really looking bothered. And I don't think we we see the same thing under Wilder. I think whatever halftime team talk we had clearly did have an effect. We we came out and we we looked a little bit more fired up for it. The mentality had changed by that point. Um and then obviously the the turn point was around kind of midway through the uh the second half and and they got that goal which I I think is just such bad luck. I, as I was saying like coming out of the the ground yesterday like it would have been an easier result to take if it was actually a well worked goal but Considering it's like such bad bad luck from McNair absolutely air kicking it, it's uh, it just leaves a bad taste, doesn't it? Yeah, there's a couple of mistakes leading at that goal, and Dana, like Tom was saying there, it felt like a bit of a lucky goal to concede. But ha- ha- what's your thoughts on it? Because you were saying about Sam Gallagher for majority of that the first half, saying how much you hated that and how bad he was, and then he went and scored. <laughs> so the, the football goes must. <laughs> <laughs> you had a shirt on saying I hate Sam Gallagher. <laughs> I definitely did after he scored that. Uh, oh yeah, well I know. Well, I was waiting for you to like take the jacket off, show that shirt, and then get the the, the Anthony Dyke steel flag out, and then start wearing that as well. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, not to the, be, not to be, but the goal, Dana, dissect it because a comedy of errors, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I went back and looked at how we conceded the corner. Absolutely no problem with it. Jones is covering and he does well against uh, Eden. But then the, the first phase, I mean, you can see that the ball comes over to Joe Lumley from the corner and he shouts keeper. You can hear it. You can hear him shout keeper. And for whatever reason, Spira either doesn't hear him somehow or he just ignores him. And Spira heads it out. I'm still kind of at that moment thinking, OK, no problem. We could clear it. Um, Crooks heads it out and then Jones uh, hooks it kind of clear but it, I mean it wasn't a bad clearance it just came straight back in and then with with McNair um, I mean it was it was really unfortunate um, I, I was kind of at the time I was like really <laughs> I was like really we're gonna concede because of that it just felt so typical of of the day um obviously we were late to the game so it kind of felt like it was, it was just a comedy of errors as a night um and that pretty much epitomized it we were just it, it was just a really poor goal to concede in a poor game and going back to your question to, about uh, to Tom about the second half I don't think too much changed. I think the big thing that did change is that we worked it down that right-hand side a lot more, but we were still a little bit off it. We we were still misplacing key passes. We were still losing key duels. And um, I think what summed up the most is when I think it was Tav tried to feed through Connolly, who actually made a good run in behind, and then it just flicks off the back of his heel and <laughs> Blackburn regained possession. There was just so many moments in that game that epitomised it. The McNair air kick did, the one I just said did. So many passes went astray, did. It was, um, yeah, it was it was poor. The goal was poor. And as we've said, it's, it's really disappointing to concede um, that type of goal and to lose because of that type of goal. It was a good finish, though, I will say. It was a good finish from Sam Gallagher. No chance for Lumley at all, Tom? No chance? Uh, I don't think there was too much. Uh, you know, m- maybe if he was like a yard over towards it, he'd have got a hand to it, but it, it was just out of reach for him. 
I don't think there was much he could have done. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll come to Chris Wilder in a second, but in terms of uh, in terms of Blackburn, I think that the, when they nullified us to, to, some, to some extent, I would have liked to see Bora be a bit more expansive yesterday and use the width a lot more. I think when you play against a side who are very compact, have a very strict shape, you've got to try and stretch them and appreciate. I don't think we did that yesterday. A lot of Bora's balls yesterday were in that half space where the majority of the bodies were, and I think that's why we, we probably weren't able to break them down as much as we wanted to. But one final thought before we move on to Chris Wilder, Dana. Is there anything else to add in terms of why Tony Mowbray's Blackburn were, were able to nullify Bora completely? I've just realised my mic was muted. That's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> enjoy that on the video. Um, but yeah, I think in the first half, Eden did a really good job up against Desire Jones. And and when you nullify Jones, you, you're nullifying a big, big threat for Bora. You see how um, prominent we are attacking down that right-hand side compared to the left. I mean, we had six attacks yesterday down that left-hand side, which are cut, uh, culminated into zero XG, um, whereas on the other side, it was it was much better than that. So I think Eden in the first half definitely forced Jones back. And that's why we didn't see him as much in the first half compared to the second. He had more touches in the second half than in the first. Um, so I think, obviously, they did their homework on Jones. And in fairness to them, especially in the first half, it worked. So, I mean, Tony Mowbray is uh, oh, he's getting a little bit annoying, isn't he, up against Borough? That was actually the first time that Chris Wilder's um, been beaten by a, a Tony Mowbray side in, in five games. So, yeah, um, annoying. Yeah, well, he's he's probably watched us the most out of anyone in the championship, given that if Blackburn aren't playing and we are, he's at the Riverside or he's watching Borough anyway. So it kind of makes sense for him to have that tactical edge on us at times because he's probably studying us. He's probably got Chris Wilder's tactics in, on his on his bedroom wall, do you know what I mean? He's looking at him every <laughs> night saying, they're going to they're gonna have that rotate in centre-half or something like that. But um, Chris Wilder himself, Tom, uh, he said he was very critical of Borough's uh, attitude during the game. He said, I thought Blackburn's was a much better attitude and they were way better than ours from minute one. Would you agree with that? Do you think Boris actually was a little bit off yesterday? Do you think he's been a bit too harsh? No, I think he's spot on. I think it comes back to what I was saying earlier, where I said, you know, they clearly wanted to put that whole result right uh, and get back on a run. And and we thought it was going to be an absolute walk in the park. Um, I, I think it's good that, and I, I think we've said it before, that we we seem to have this this culture growing in the, in, in the club that... Uh, you know, it, it needs to be as close to a perfect performance as, as possible. Uh, you know, it needs to be a winning mentality. Um, yeah, I, I think it just kind of comes down to that. And I, I don't think it was too harsh at all. There was, I, I, can't, I can't remember who it was on Twitter. I think it was Scott Wilson from Northern Echo saying, um, you know, that performance wasn't even that bad. And you need to, like, if he kept, we went and saw some of the the other northeast teams, like you'd see uh, a properly bad performance. I only partially agree with that, just because I, I feel like if it was it was a bad performance, it could have easily been worse. Um, I didn't think Blackburn threatened too much, uh, so I think in one respect, our defence did its job, but creatively, we had nothing. Um, and I think it, it's worrying as well, uh, just going off what Dana just said there about the uh, them nullifying uh, Jones and us having nothing down the left-hand side. It's kind of giving me similar vibes to uh, that season under Pulis where Villa kind of figured out Traore in the playoffs. I'm just like, okay, we stick four men around him. He can't do anything. Uh, <laughs> so I, I think it's, it's just a bit worrying that all that we're our play is going to go down that right-hand side when when we're looking for anything creative as well. Mm. Even with that, I would have... You, you, you could even have the option of maybe put... I know we said last podcast we'd rather have Tav Central, but that game yesterday, I thought we could have probably done with Tav, maybe pull out on that left-hand side and maybe bringing Pierre on and just having that other centre mid midfielder in there to maybe try and unlock something. But... Um, Dana, we said at the top of the show, this type of result was definitely coming. Um, the Mansfield and the Renner performances, Telltale and Sands, really, wasn't it? Was this result pretty much coming? 
Yeah, I mean, all good runs come to an end, don't they? And it was going to happen at some point. And this, I mean, this was a massive test for Borough, the toughest test so far under Chris Wilder. Um, Blackburn, although their bubble was burst somewhat by Hull, they're still a very good team. And Tony Mowbray has them set up incredibly well. Um, and it, it probably was coming, yeah. Um, I don't want to say that our luck ran out because that, kind of indicates that we were somewhat fortunate with our late winners, obviously three winners, three late winners on the bounce, but I don't think it was down to luck. I think it was down to our determination and what was put to, to Chris Wilder, um, the winning mentality, and we earned that. So I don't think it was luck, but I think we did run into some misfortune, shall we say, um, yesterday. M misfortune and obviously a little bit of bad quality from ourselves. So, Tom, doesn't really change your thoughts much about Boris playoff push then? Do you think it was just uh, one blip in the road? Yeah, and, and like I said earlier, I think it could be uh, just a bit of a, a wake-up call for us and, you know, uh, something to help with mentality. I, I, I had an analogy I was uh, talking to my friend about today. I was like, it, it reminds me a little bit of, um, you know, when uh, Anthony Joshua, just before he fought Ruiz, and he was mm. like... You just expected him to win every time he went in. And I'm sure he thought that as well. He probably thought, right, I'm just going to walk straight through Ruiz and then got knocked out. And then I would go away and actually think about it and came back with a different you know, approach to it and different mentality, sorted himself out and won the title back. So I feel like that's kind of a good analogy for it, as long as we went on, on Coventry to kind of fit into that. Um you know, as long as we can go away, look at it and think, right, yeah, we, we weren't professional in, in, in what we did there. We need to improve on Coventry. Then, you know, that, that could be a good thing for, for the rest of the season. Middlesbrough nil, Coventry seven. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, let, let's let's move on to questions then for this week. Uh, so, as always, if you send us your questions in on Twitter or on our email, the board breakdown at hotmail.com, we'll answer them on the podcast and the first one we've got this week is from ben he says was it a case of bora being poor or blackburn being good tom trying to take that one bit of both i think um both. yeah i still want to kind of give blackburn credit even though i said earlier like they didn't seem that threatening going forward they still did uh, a professional job on us i thought even you know when when we had the ball at the back they were they were pressing with intent and, and smart when they were doing it as well um and ultimately probably cause not errors but i'm trying to think of the right word for it just a little bit of nervousness that might have led to that goal yeah okay fair. and then next question is from nick um he says has moga shown every other team how to beat us we didn't appear to have a plan b uh dana do you want to take this one yeah, I think we did have a plan B, which was stick every striker under the sun up front. I mean, he went for five this time, which was a an improvement on the on the four against Reading. I mean, I, I think in fairness, Mowbray just seems to know how to beat us. And every time he comes up against us, he just has a plan that is executed so well. And it happened again yesterday. Um I kind of agree what Tom said, though, about the threat of, of Blackburn. There were a few crosses in the first half that just went straight out of play. Um, there actually wasn't that great. I think it was, I can't even remember what it was, but, but it wasn't much better, let me put it that way. Um, but crucially, defensively, they were fantastic. I thought Lenahan did really well. Lenahan, Wharton and, and Van Heck were fantastic. Their midfield was really good. And Borough ultimately just didn't really have an answer to it unfortunately and talk about bounce back ability against Coventry I really wanted to see that bounce back ability yesterday and, and a lot has been said on this pod and a lot of praise has been given to Borough for our reaction to the goal <clears throat> goals that we've conceded um, and I think we, we did see that yesterday but we just weren't at it yesterday we really were we were just off colour as I've mentioned before. Mm, absolutely and also just to just add to that as well and I know it's showing a team on how to beat us different teams have different strength, strengths and weaknesses it's not always as simple as that and I think that yeah there is that's probably maybe one way to beat Borough but there probably may be another 50 ways on where, how to beat Borough but 
it's the same with every other team, isn't it? Um, but in terms of plan B, you just try and make plan A better. And if plan B, plan A doesn't get any better, then maybe just do the McLaren and just chuck all the strikers on and just see what see what sticks. Um, the next question uh, is from the little fella uh, and Vinny. And the both ask, do we need to be searching for a left wing back? You have both mentioned it early doors, so I feel like this answer is going to be quite easy. Tom, De Boer need a new left wing back. I think as a specialist position, yeah. Um, you know, I think it it might prove a bit of a short sighted decision to to sign Neil Taylor full time if we go out looking for a left wing back in January. Um, but I think he, it, even if it's in the summer, as a specialist position, yes, we we do need one. Mm. Easy, easy question that one. Eh? Uh, for your, um, next question, it's from Phil. He says, uh, "Why are we suddenly just throwing on loads of forwards when we are chasing the game?" It's wild to be watching our 2005-2006 UEFA Cup run. He's doing the McLaren. That's all it is. Sometimes it just works. Uh, but Dana, do you want to add to this one? Yeah, he must. He must be, wasn't he? I mean, it's just, it, it is a bit of a peculiar one because yesterday I thought that mm. we probably should have had some midfield reinforcements there. It was a difficult day for for the midfield as a whole, to be honest. I thought Housen was the pick of the, the the kind of bad bunch there. I thought he really struggled, and I kind of would have liked to have seen Crooks maybe play in Housen's position, and then you put a Piero on in Crooks's position, but it wasn't to be. Obviously, Wilder sees reason to put the strikers on, and and we did it against Reading. And it worked, didn't it? But I think the difference between Reading and, and Blackburn is, I mean, obvious. Um, better confidence for, for Blackburn. Reading have the lesser quality. They're on a terrible run. They're playing players out of position, depleted squad, um, fragile confidence. It was always going to be, it, it was probably always going to work. Um, not to take any credit off Wilder for the move, but it, it was probably had more chance of working against Reading than it did against Blackburn. And for Blackburn, they probably just saw it as a reason to stand up and be counted even further than they did throughout the whole of the game before that happened. So, yeah, um, it's an interesting tactic. It worked against Reading. It didn't work against Blackburn. Um, I would have liked to have seen something different in midfield. OK, um, I, I agree with you. And we'll keep with the midfield chat because Jack, Jake, Andy all ask, um, should Piero be brought on? feature more uh, than he currently does at the moment. Tom, do you want to take this one? Um, up until yesterday, I'd have said no, um, purely because it was a winning team. I don't think you change it. And I think most of that, well, all of the midfield three have been playing pretty solidly uh, in, in all the games running up to that. I think in a game like yesterday, um it, it could have been worth putting him in. Uh, like Dana just said there, it could have been worth dropping Crooks back, taking House off and putting Piero on just for a little bit more creativity there. Um, specifically thinking about his his comments after the game and, and what he said about mentality in, in the in, in the team, um, I can see players getting dropped ahead of Saturday. Now that it's not a winning team anymore, you know, I can see him bringing a couple of uh, different options in. I think one of them, uh, which we could see, uh, would be Balogun in for Connolly. But I wouldn't be surprised if if Piero's got more of a chance of having a look in now as well. Hmm. Yeah, I, I would like to see Piero come in uh, maybe for this game just to try and just to change things up, freshen things, try and prove the point that competitions are. Uh, com- uh, it's pretty much a golden ticket to try and get at this eleven, and I think that he needs to come in. I think. I think he does need games as well. I appreciate we have been linked with Jeff Hendrick today as well from Newcastle, which I don't even know what type of signing that would potentially be for us. Um, but yeah, I, I would like to see Piero come in. Um, I think he offers a little bit more. I'd be interested to see what we would do if he, if he was to do that. Um, but next question, it's from Rob. And he says, who can replace Housen in the deep line midfield role? Dana, do you want to take this one? The obvious answer is McNair because it's happened before. The Mansfield game, McNair was playing in that position when uh, Housen was out with COVID. Um, you saw him move into that position as well. And it, it, it's probably a safe option because although McNair is playing in that left left side centre half role, if you put him in midfield, we've got options in we've got options done in defence to be able to kind of plug that gap. You know, you've got Sol Bamba there, Lee Peltier, then you've got Nathan Wood if need be as well. So McNair is obviously the the, the obvious candidate, but <clears throat> I'm kind of thinking, could we 
maybe add a little bit more quality to that position as well. It's always been a position where I've looked at and I'm thinking, OK, maybe we could add a little bit more there, uh, particularly under Warner, because I think Howison was struggling a bit in that man marking system. But now um, he obviously doesn't have to do that as much. He's got three defenders behind him that are, are not being pulled out of position, crucially. So we could potentially bring somebody else in obviously with isn't house and house's contract up soon i think it is um yeah so it could potentially be something that we look at but it, it is interesting because i think mcnair's fantastic in that center half position but he does have potential as well to play that deep line midfield role um so maybe that's something to keep an eye on you could have dyke still there as well we've spoken about yeah. dyke still before um but i suppose do, do you take him out of the position that he's doing so well in at the moment, being that overlapping, underlapping centre half? You probably don't. No, I, I don't. I don't think you can either. But I would love to see Anthony like stay on that um, deep line midfield role. I think that he'd be absolutely fantastic. He, I think he just die. He would just, he would just break the game up so well and get a go on the reset and start to play again. But you know, I'm not a manager. Um, but Tom, the next question. Um, you said about it earlier. Um, but. About Balogun potentially coming in for for Connolly, Connolly, but Alfie says, who would you start? Um, who would just, who would be the starting striker? <clears throat> oh my god, this question's bad, worded so badly. Um, <laughs> who would who would your starting striker pair and be going forward? <laughs> Was it harsh to drop what more the last couple of or the last couple of games? Um, who what, what would you do? Uh, I think it was kind of harsh, um, even though we, we've clearly, you know, spent money on loan fees and wages and stuff to bring in two, uh, you know, quality strikers on loan from the Premier League. Um, it, it seemed like we kind of had to to play them. Um, I, I'd be tempted to go back to Watmore and Spira. They actually seem to to link up well up front. Um, and you know, something Dana was saying at the, at the, the match last night was that Connolly and Spira just don't have any chemistry, uh, they don't know where, where each other well, where they both are. Um, there's no kind of interlinking between them, but we saw plenty of that between what more and Spira. So I'd be tempted to go back to that. Um, but I also wouldn't be surprised to see Balogun in on the left hand side and Spira on the right. Um, just because yesterday when he came on, and I think against Redden as well, he did look bright. And I'd, I'd say he actually looked brighter yesterday. He looked very good with the ball at his feet. Um, on mm. the issue was he just kind of wanted to take everyone on. Um, but, yeah, I, I'd say he, he looked bright yesterday. So I'd say either him or what more um, in for the next game, partner in Spira. Okay. Dan, anything to add on that one? Yeah, I think it is interesting that a lot of people seem to deem Spira undroppable. Um, I certainly don't think he is. Um, I thought he was poor yesterday. And there are times where Spira in games, you sometimes forget that he's there. And I don't know whether it's mostly on him or mostly on his teammates, because he does make some good runs. You see he makes good runs. But I, then I think sometimes he makes runs for the sake of it. And he's a bit of a conundrum, um, is Spira. And I kind of thought this even when he was scoring. Um, but I would, I think I would probably play Balogun. But then you think about the link-up be between Spira and Watmore was good. I'm not surprised that Conley came in because he's been here since, what was it, the second day of January, the second day of the window. Um, it might be harsh for me to say and for Tom to echo that there's no chemistry between Spira and Connolly because he's had two games, but I haven't seen any any promising signs, <laughs> not one promising sign between them in terms of their link-up play. Mm. Um, 180 minutes of football, so it's it's a little bit... Maybe that's one that we can kind of look back on with a bigger sample size, but yeah, um, I'm not really keen on that at the moment from initial judgment. But yeah, I would probably play... Balogun and, and, and Spira, because Balogun seems to have that clinical uh, finish from up, well, from the under 23s anyway. Uh, and then Spira is, is pretty decent with his link up play. So I think you've got to have a finisher and you've got to have a, a link up striker. And, that, and that, that has potential to work. What about Balogun and what more? I was thinking that, that as well. Uh, yeah, I was thinking that as well. It could work. But um, yeah. I, I kind of feel like Spira kind of has that starting spot 
Mm. Starting spot nailed guess on that. Next game. <laughs> guess drop doesn't play again for the rest of the season. Um, <laughs> not even a single minute. Um, but yeah, I think the 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 strike force last night. I don't think that it worked at all. To be honest, um, it's kind of like putting ice cream on a pizza. It doesn't really work, does it? You like, you like them both, but it doesn't work. Um, I mean, some people might like ice cream on a pizza. So who, who knows? Um, <laughs> my dad. But, my dad likes yeah. that. Yeah, Dave might. Yeah, Dave might actually enjoy that. But it was kind of like pizza and ice cream. I just don't. I just didn't think it. Didn't think it worked together. They're both good, both nice, good things. But together, no. Um, I think. Yeah, I, I'm not really. I wasn't really particularly keen on Conley yesterday in that central role either. And I think he he looked a bit lost. I think it is the game, and there's a lot of reasons what we've said previously. Um, in over like the last thirty minutes or so, that can probably explain why that didn't really work. Maybe we have him on that left hand side, you know, where he's a bit more, he's got a bit more fr- freedom. Um, but for me, I, I didn't, I didn't like him in that central position. Um, but for you know, it's only a small sample size, so you can, you might, you might need, you might need a bit more games to, 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 to have a full decision on that. But for me, yeah, Balogun has to start. I think I, I, he seemed very, very bright, really, really good on the ball. Like I'm so, so impressed with his ability. Um, and then after that, I think it's just it's either Sparrow or, or what more for me. Um, you could maybe put Joshy Corburn in there, but if you want to have a have a, have a different plan B, but he is he is inspirational with the captain's armband, so <laughs> maybe that's why we maybe that's the reason we didn't score yesterday because Josh Corburn didn't get the captain's armband in like the eighty fifth minute or something. Um, but but before we move on, um, move move to the pre- present place. We just want to remind you all that we're raising money for the Morton Your Own Disease Association this season. Uh, we're currently at our target of two thousand pound dinner. Um, what does our target do? What what can we do if we hit our target of two thousand pounds? Well, I mean, the money can go towards um, funding an information pack for somebody recently diagnosed with a disease. Just a tenner um, goes towards funding that. Um, £85 can buy software to enable somebody to bank their own voice uh, before the, the disease takes that away from them. Um, £230 can fund a year's care, uh, care for someone with MND. And crucially as well, all of the money that we raised could go towards uh, funding research to find a cure for the disease so yeah massive thank you to everybody that has donated so far as johnny said we're almost at two thousand uh, pounds raised we are running this until the end of the season so there's plenty of time to donate um, and if you do want to donate head to www.justgiving.com forward slash the borough breakdown mnd and if we hit that two thousand or more, I will give away my signed Frank Quidru shirt. Um, it's all framed and lovely match worn. I'll even I'll give it away if we hit that two thousand one. Um, but before we look at Borough news this week, um, it's time for praise and place. You know, the, the place we pick our player, or management staff, or whoever we want, uh, and give them some praise. So, is there any mentions this week, um, Tom? Who's going to be in your praise and place? I feel like I'm a broken record most weeks now, and I feel like this play is quickly becoming uh, to me what Tav is to, to Dana. But um, <laughs> Joe Lumley again. Um, okay. I, I thought, interesting one. Okay. I thought he he, he did well uh, yesterday. You know, I think he made a, a good save early on in the first half, um, which you know I haven't seen mentioned too much, but it was a good save down low. Um, and again, just kind of distribution. There are there are times, admittedly, um, like on on the lead up to the goal, where um, you know when he shouted keeper, and obviously Sparrow, I didn't hear it or you know ignored it or whatever. Maybe he just needs that that influence to uh, to kind of come out and, and collect the ball a little bit more. But I didn't think he did a, a whole lot wrong yesterday. Um, I think it, he probably actually did more more good than than bad, really. I am seeing improvements in his game. Yeah, okay. No, I mean, it's, this could, that could have been a really controversial one. I feel like you've got to be, could we get pellets for that, Tom? You never know. Could we get <laughs> I agree thing? with him. I agree yeah. with him, to be fair. I thought Lumley did, did pretty well. I mean, sweeping as well. Um, he, he was sweeping the ball up quite well. Um, obviously, there's always going to be a bit of nervousness behind Joe Lumley because of maybe previous mistakes but I think we have to give credit where credit's due and I thought he was good yesterday I do agree with Tom there so are you gonna go with Joe Lumley as well Dana no I'm actually gonna go with um Balogun actually 10 okay. minutes on the pitch four passes one chance created you can't go wrong with that can you and I think he's he's got that 
uh, he just seems like a very good player technically. And I know it's only small cameo appearances that we've seen, but from those, I have been impressed with him, and I'm I'm eager to see more from him. But also, I think we have to put in the praise in place. You mentioned staff there, Johnny. I think we have to mention the Borough medics. Um, obviously, there was a, a medical emergency in the crowd um, in the second half, and they were they were there really quickly to to see to the to the Blackburn fan. And thankfully, he's okay. So that's the the main thing there. So credit to the the fans, obviously for um for obviously letting people know that there was a problem and then credit to the borough medics for being there uh very quickly yeah shout out to tom pritchard dr Pr- tom pritchard you know saved two lives yeah. now at games which is as well yeah chris mosley as well in the, in the medical team it was fantastic uh to what they did and hopefully the the blackburn the blackburn supporter gets well very soon um and for my present place I would probably go with Balligan or Isaiah Jones, really. The only, only creative sparks that we had throughout the game yesterday gave us some really good chances when we needed to. And, you know, I think it, it's very easy to say Isaiah Jones is in the present place every week for his performances <laughs> as, as of late. And, uh, but yeah, Balligan really excites me. Really excites me. Um, I think he's a very, very technically gifted football for sure. Hopefully, if, if he does start, he starts getting the goals that will probably increases value ever so much and, and and more but i feel like he's a he's a good good player um but let's see what we do in the remaining few days of the transfer window and maybe we might add to that who knows um but let's look at news then um because other news uh for this week and it was only one bit um that we had in borough announced lee catamall has came back to the club and he's now the lead coach for the under 18s uh, following the promotion of mark tinkler to the under 23s given that graham lee is now manager of hartlepool united um Guys, what's your thoughts on that one? Because it was a bit of a strange one, seeing a boy, another Borough player come back. Um, now he's going to be coaching once again. Uh, Tom, good appointment, thoughts, any opinion on it? Yeah, I mean, he's been with the club for, for quite a while in the, the youth coach, and it just wasn't really announced. Um, I've, I believe I've got him on LinkedIn, and I saw, I saw the uh, the job <laughs> post of him, him going. What like a random person to have on LinkedIn. Something. Oh, I've got all the footballers on LinkedIn, but uh, <laughs> trying yeah, to get I'm, them on as guests. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, I, I saw I saw the the job announcement when when he came back, um, and, and like I say, it just wasn't really publicised. But um, yeah, he, he's clearly worked hard in the role that he's had, and you know, if they're promoting from within, and and they think he's going to do a good job, and obviously Mark Tank was moved up to the under twenty threes, and they promoted with from within there as well, and it's probably a a, a good kind of culture you'd want to work in. Mm. Dana, what's your thoughts on it, and could you see this promotion from within keep going for the future? Potentially, yeah. I mean, my thoughts on Catmull being appointed is I actually think it's a good move. I saw a few comments of, you know, the typical jobs for, for the boys, etc. But crucially, Lee Catmull knows how to get out of the academy. And I saw a few of the under 18s post, uh, repost it on, on their Instagram stories. So obviously, they're happy with the move. And it must be a, a massive buzz for them to be coached by somebody that has followed or that's that's been in their position, that has... Mm obviously been in their their boots and as well as progressing through the academy and making it into the Middlesbrough first team he's forged a a, a long career at a decent level so I think it's a it's a good move obviously we'll soon see the under 18s have been doing well this season so um see if that continues and I'm I'm quite happy with that appointment yeah, very experienced as well in terms of his playing career. I think, what, 350 games um, for Borough, Wigan, Sunderland and, and Venlo as well. So, I think, yeah, abs- absolutely. A lot of experience. Good to probably see him back. It'd be interesting to see what we do and what his future looks like at the club in, in the coming years. Um, but, yeah, if the players are happy and he's good on the training ground, then absolutely you're all for it. And, of course, our tackling is going to go up by times 10 and our booking is going to go up by times 10. <laughs> Um, in our youth team games now, a bit of more aggression, and, and the shots are going to get higher. Shots are going to get higher, and I think it's only right we we hire uh, Grant Ledbetter to come in as well as mm. the, uh, and then it, they can re reignite their feud um, or become <laughs> friends. Um, maybe you become a tag team or something like that. Um, I, I play a brew on a on a wrestling night, but um, <laughs> let let's. Let's uh, move on to Coventry then, because Middlesbrough 
are playing commentary at the Riverside um, on Saturday. The Sky Blues are 10th in the championship uh, with 37 points for 25 games. Mark Robbins is doing an absolutely fantastic job uh, there on a shoestring budget. Um, guys, what's your thoughts on Coventry? Because this could be a really, really difficult game for Borough, couldn't it, Dana? It could, yeah. I mean, I was really impressed with them when we went to the recall. I thought their movement really caused us so many problems. Um, I like Fankati Dalbo on that right-hand side, Callum O'Hare as well. He's actually been dropped for the game against uh, Stoke, which is happening right now, um, or rotated, shall we say. So that's interesting. I did see a few of their fans were giving them a little bit of criticism. Um, I guess for maybe final final ball end product or that sort of thing, but a player with quality on his day. Um, and they had so many runners at the record. They had Jokeresh, Waghorn, him, uh, Alan O'Hare. I was really impressed with with Jamie Allen actually when when we went there. Um, they set up in a in a three four one two that game, but they've switched to a three four two one with two attacking midfielders supplying uh, Jokeresh, who's gone a little bit off the boil, but still um, he's shown that he can be a threat. Um, in terms of statistics, they are frequent shooters. They average 4.9 shots on target per match, which ranks third in the league behind QPR and Fulham. Um, they are a possession-based side, averaging 53.7% uh, possession so far this season, which is the sixth uh, in the league. And they will try to pressure uh, sixth for possession one in the final third. Uh, they are unbeaten uh, in the last five away games, uh, but the last Coventry win on Teesside came in 1993 at Ayrson Park. Uh, they haven't won at the Riverside in 11 attempts. So Coventry win. Well done, Co- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well done, for your victory. Middlesbrough nil, Coventry seven. Um, <laughs> Tom, now that Dan is uh, uh, walking the football First start God, of the game is back, everyone. Uh, 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 you've brought back the football and gods. This, this, this is why we've got Coventry fans and away we're fans to come on the podcast, but appreciate the turnaround was a bit too short this week to do it. But ah, dear me, Dana, dear me. Uh, Tom, any more to add? Yeah, I mean, just just looking at their their recent form, I think they've only actually won one in five. Um, you know, the the last game uh, lost two one to QBR, uh, beat Peterborough four one away on the fifteenth of Jan. Um, uh, I mean, it was it was one in five in the league because they had beat Derby uh, one 0 in the FA Cup. But before then, home loss one 0 to Millwall, one one to Hudders, uh, away at Huddersfield, and a two one loss at home at West Brom. So I was quite surprised to see them in ten foot. It does seem like they've fallen away a little bit uh, recently. I think it's going to be a tough test for us on on Saturday. Um, and as we mentioned earlier, it's going to be a, a test of character and test of mentality. So. We're going to need to see that uh, bounce back ability on on Saturday. Absolutely. So, what's your predictions then for Saturday's game against Mark Robinson Sky Blues at the Riverside? What are you going to go for, Tom? I'm going to go one nil Borough. One nil to the Butter. Um, Dana, what are you going to go for? I'm going to go two nil Borough. Two and Elbora. I'm going to go seven nil Coventry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go with. Uh, I think I think we'll get the W. I think I think we'll win. I think we'll win one nil. Tom one or two nil. Um, I can't. Can we? Can I have a one point five just to be in the middle? Um, <laughs> over one point five goals. <laughs> over one point five goals. Yeah, for over one point five goals, and I'm going to go with Crooks to get carded. Um, so there we go. Please that, bet that. responsibly. Please bet responsibly, yes. Um, um, but that's it, guys. Thank you very much for uh, for joining me, as always. And thank you very much for the listeners for listening. Um, and that's it. Borough Tis defeat for the first time since November. The first defeat in 10. Wilder's win rate drops to 64% and wins seventh place on the championship table. It's not the end of the world, is it? This is the Borough Breakdown podcast. And that was all your match day chatter in a pod of the Borough Breakdown. <laughs>